Come, Nerevar, come, witness the Skyrim waifu tier list. Skyrim is a desolate wasteland filled with snow and ice, and you need someone to carry your burdens while you make your way back to Morrowind. I will serve as your wingman during this sermon. I have seen other versions of me and some Enwas do this, but I wanted to give my own divine opinion as well. Without further delay, let us begin. Ayla the Huntress is a Nord Enwa who is unashamedly part of the Companions. The Companions is one of the worst factions you could join, with the worst benefits. Ayla, who is supposed to be this brave and honorable warrior, also berates you and does not give you a time of the day unless you join the Companions. Oh, and if you are also a furry, you might rest in peace, knowing that there is an animalistic side to Ayla. She has been bestowed powers of her scene, turning her into a werewolf. All werewolves belong in the farm tool tier. No, I will not be taking any objections from Ayla Simps. The Nord Lumberjack Airy is running Anga's mill. What a small life. Forced to carry on her father's work, forced to pay his debts, and forced to pay the taxes of her oppressors. This sounds more like enslavement than freedom. Her small dreams and small plans are the result of a life lived in fear and debt. You have to simp for her by completing various chores and lumberjack jobs. Nerevar, who has time for that? F tier, at least she's not a farm tool even though she uses you as one. Anwen, or should I say Enwawen, is a red guard priestess of Debella. Nerevar, you are smart. You know what it means if you find a Debella statue in your spouse's bedroom. Why would you even consider marrying someone serving Debella? Is this how you honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned? Oh, and supposedly she has a shop that sells goods and earns you a hundred gold per day. I hate to break it to you, Nerevar, but this money is probably coming from only scrolls. T. Unless you are one of those guys with a silt strider trash mullet. Avrusa Sarethi is a Dunmer, in Skyrim, forced to flee her homeland by the Red Mountain, oppressed in her new home by the Nords. Her talents are limited by the ignorance of her new people. Now she makes her small living in small things, farming the only thing she knows. Her small dreams and small plans betray her narrow outlook. It may be possible to rescue her from her fate and her narrow vision. I wonder what she would become, free and unleashed from the petty bounds of her world. Either way, by being a non enwa Dunmer from Morrowind, she earns the coveted B-tier. You may ask, why does she get the B-tier? Nerevar, while she honors the Sixth House and the Tribe Unmourned. I do not want to go anywhere near that Avrasi. Oh, really, Nerevar Bogach, an orc in Wa, that dumb savage. Forced by her tribal customs to sell herself to some brutish orc chief. Even her freedom is a cage, for she knows the chieftains of her people are all savages, and she has only a choice between one barbarian and another. The glory of a Nord wedding may have tempted her, but I wonder how long that sentiment will last once she learns that the Nord Enwas are basically orcs, but in human form. But a Dunmer could teach her so much more, free her from her brutish culture, and let her know the real meaning of freedom. Either way, she belongs in F-tier. Berlina Marion can be found in the College of Winterhold. She is doing crazy experiments during her free time. She specializes in the school of mysticism, but if she were a true mystic, she wouldn't bother with petty concerns like the college's political squabbles. But all the same, she's definitely a bright star. I would welcome her into the sixth house. Her confidence is both her greatest strength and a potential liability. I hope she does not become arrogant. It could destroy her. 
I have faith that she will come to appreciate the fact that I am a god. She is both a follower and actual waifu material. But in order to achieve that, you have to become her lab rat. Overall, compared to everyone on this list, she belongs in a tier. Ah, Camilla Valerius, the mongrel dog of the Empire, in a love triangle with two Enwas, Feindal and Sven. Both of them are useless, although Feindal is a good shot when you are starting out in Riverwood. What a petty, sordid, and insignificant little situation. A love triangle among a collection of petty and insignificant people. Camilla is shallow and fickle, and will soon lose interest in whoever wins her hand. And if you have married her, she will soon forget the charms of her suitor once you have taken her with you. For her affections are easily swayed, shallow and short-lived. Feindel continues to visit her regardless of the fact if she marries you. F-tier for Feindal, who enters your home through a simp-shaped hole. Dravnia the Stoneweaver is a Dunmer from Morrowind that now resides in Kynesgrove in Skyrim and works in the local mines. She works there herself, instead of using farm tools like a real Dunmer. The people in town don't treat her particularly well, except for Roggy Knotbeard. She is an expert in alteration magic and can be coerced into marriage by some fire salts. Fire salts, Nerevar. However, considering the fact that she is actually a waifu, I will give her the B-tier. Gorza Grabagol, an Enwa orc blacksmith, hunched over a forge like a common laborer. Yet, there is a flicker of something. Not ambition, precisely, but a focus in her craft. It lacks refinement. A Dunmer smith would shape the metal with power and purpose. Nerevar, why would you even consider marrying this, how shall I put it, brute? F-tier, unless you are extremely desperate. Gilfrey is a mongrel dog of the Empire who is also a lumberjack. What is it with these lumberjack waifus? They surely threaten your self-confidence, but they can't threaten me, a god. How can you threaten a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. Anyhow, this Enwa works at Mixwater Mill in East March, and all her workers decided to fight for the mongrel dogs. She marries you so you can carry her wooden logs. F-tier, unless wood is what honors your house, Nerevar. Hilund is an Enwa Skal Nord who lost the Thirsk Mead Hall to Reeklings. Nerevar, imagine being so inebriated that you lose your settlement to a bunch of farm tool reeklings with their chief that can barely speak. After you help them retake the hall, she has the audacity to ask to be your wife. What a grand and intoxicating innocence. She may be a strong skull warrior producing spears, but honestly, she is no better than everyone else. I put in F tier. Seriously, Nerevar, this is such a generic choice. Iona is a highly complex case. Yes, she is a boring housecarl from the Rift of all places. Any housecarl from Riften should be treated with suspicion. Also, this Nord Enwa is unenthusiastic, bored, and ready to betray you at any second. If you accidentally make the age-old mistake of offending a chicken, she will join the quest to vanquish you. This is the worst house Carl you can get, so she would better serve that false god Boethia. F-tier, unless you like your relationship dissolving upon a minor inconvenience. Janassa is a mercenary in the Drunken Huntsman in Skyrim. She can be hired for a measly price of 500 gold. She is a fierce warrior and has a passion for violence. When she attacks, she attacks relentlessly and does not stop fighting Enwa guards in Skyrim, even if you decide not to honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned and stop. You will have to pay her fines as well after she unfortunately leaves you as a widower, free to marry again. Due to her impulsive nature, she is not able to serve as a steward. 
Overall, she is a solid option as your wife. I will put her in the S tier. No, Nerevar, I am being pragmatic here. And my preference for strong Dunmer, who are willing to go against the whole Enwa province, does not have anything to do with this decision. Ah, then we have Jordis, the plain housecarl from Solitude. Jordis, the sword maiden, more like Jordis, the sheep maiden, a strong arm wasted in service to a Nord pretender, content to follow instead of lead. She is a pebble on the beach, easily washed away by the tide of Dunmer resurgence. She is very expensive to obtain, and I don't think it is worth it, Nerevar. Jarl Elisif's quests are very tedious, to be honest with you. She is one of the quietest Enwas I have ever encountered. While I prefer my Enwas to be as silent as the grave, not when it comes to my partners. She belongs in the F tier, unless you prefer the silent types. Honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned by subscribing to my sermons raising your thumbs and writing on the parchment down below. We have many more waifus to go over, so hold on to your skooma. Lydia, the Nord Housecarl, a symbol of your pathetic reliance on these Enwas, Nerevar. Her looks might hold the crude appeal of a Nord brute, but she possesses nothing but the most rudimentary skills of a warrior, a beast of burden, perhaps, suitable for bearing your trinkets while a true Dunmer warrior leads the way. Obedient, at least. Her silence reveals the shallowness of her Nord mind, incapable of true strategic thought or devotion to our greater purpose. She fulfills her duties as commanded and nothing more. Enwas like her are beneath consideration as a spouse for a true leader of the Sixth House. Perhaps once she has proven her worth cleaning the stables of our Wargar, you may revisit her potential, though I doubt she would survive the process. F-tier, Nerevar, do not argue with me over this. I do not care how much of a useful idiot she is. Mjol, the lioness is a powerful Enwa who lost her sword in some Dwemer ruin. She had the misfortune of being found by a mongrel dog of the Empire Simp near Erin. This Enwa decides to nurse her back to health. Even if you decide to marry Miol, he will be following her everywhere she goes. He even moves in with you. My brother in Dagoth, Twitch has not been invented yet on Tamriel. Why would you do this to yourself? Her Simp aside, let's look at Miol as a Nord Enwa. Well, at least she is interesting and honorable, but that's about it. She is a bit better than the ones in F-tier, so that I will give her the... Oh, that sounds a little strange. She belongs in the D-tier. But Nerevar, marrying this Enwa barbarian, really does not fit Sixth House standards. Morwen, a Skal Enwa... Oh wait, no, she is a Nord Enwa who, for some reason, decided to move to the Skull Village. The marriage of Morwen is hardly worthy of note. Morwen's parents were two fools who deserted the island of Solstheim and betrayed the trust of their tribesmen. Both she and her mother deserve to be shunned. Morwen was a mercenary, which shows she is more committed to her work than her family. Nothing to see here, Nerevar. She belongs in the F-tier. She is a long way from home. Muri is an alchemist. Oh, no, 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 no. Nerevar, while I understand this Breton Enwa's desire for revenge, she is far too dangerous to marry since she crossed the threshold. She went as far as to hire the Dark Brotherhood to get rid of her husband, Alain Dufont, and also orders you to get rid of Nilsine Shattershield as though the Shatter Shields do not have enough on their plates. Look, Nerevar, if she was willing to get rid of those who are close to her that easily or without any qualms, regardless of how sound her reasoning was, marrying her would be like marrying Almalexia. One day, 
you are in the land of the living, and the next day they start blaming me for eliminating you, even though obviously some apothecary gave you a bad health potion. I will put her in D tier for dangerous. The best thing that can be said of Anjata is that she is a talented warrior. However, she is a Nord Enwa, and she is bound to her homeland's superstition and bigotry. And she has devoted herself completely to a military organization that has forsaken the way of the sword singer for brute force. The companion warriors have some noble qualities, but she is not one of them. No doubt she would be a suitable bodyguard for some outlander or imperial mongrel dog, but she lacks both nobility and ambition. Best avoided. F tier for how boring she is. Raya is the one housecarl that I have a preference for. She is a Red Guard mercenary, but she is not a true warrior such as my servants. While her use of a shield and axe shows some promise, her technique is crude and unrefined. She could be turned into a deadly warrior with proper training and better equipment. However, she would be a pretty boring spouse, so I unfortunately am going to give her the F tier. Why are you looking at me, Nerevar? I might be harsh, but blame Skyrim NPCs, not me. Orla is the priestess of the false god Dibella, which we discussed earlier. Dibella problems aside, Orla does not make an interesting or worthwhile marriage option. Her only distinguishing trait is her greed, as she will hire mercenaries to track down and punish thieves. It is unlikely that she would make a suitable mother, as she does not seem to have the instincts necessary for that role. And while she may have some use as a steward, she is not an appropriate partner. And she has no unique dialogue that would make her a suitable wife. No doubt she could hold some appeal to a thief, but in the grand scheme of things, her value is limited. F tier, I think we can agree on this. Rhea is a typical imperial mongrel dog. She left her homeland to seek glory and wealth in Skyrim. When a better opportunity arose, she quickly abandoned the Imperial Legion to join the Companions. And now that she has a chance to earn your favor, she will likely leave the Companions. Her lack of loyalty makes her a poor choice for any kind of long-term relationship. And for a steward, she would likely be too arrogant and self-serving. In short, she is not worthy of the your affection. F tier, Nerevar. Senna is just another Breton Enwa serving Dibella. She asks you to clean up the mess you made in the false god temple. You did the right thing, Nerevar. However, you would be doing the wrong thing by marrying her. Seriously, these are the worst marriage candidates in all of Tamriel. They serve the goddess of infidelity, F tier. Shavi is an Argonian farm tool. Nerevar, it's time to stop. No, you are not reenacting the Argonian maid here or anywhere. Have you gone mad? Oh, and this thing used to be a thief and wants you to complete a fetch quest. Farm tool tier. And no, you cannot use farm tools for any other purpose other than farming. Understand? The Nord Enwa Silja shows a lack of responsibility in failing to deliver a simple message to her father. It is unfortunate that she was injured, but it does not excuse her abandonment of this task. And to ask the Dragonborn, a stranger, to act as intermediary between herself and her father, is quite a bold request. This shows she has no regard for boundaries and little concern for her father's feelings. And the reward she offers is rather modest, considering the length of the trip. I suggest she lacks tact and patience and would likely make a poor wife. F tier, I do not care if there are mods on Nexus that make her more appealing. Tari is another example of arrogant self-importance. She lacks tact and civility, and is more than a little rude. 
She insults you on first meeting and shows no regret or effort to change. She displays typical Altmer superiority, and it is unlikely she would ever change her attitude or respect to cultural differences. Although she may be polite after marriage, it is likely only an act, and her true nature will emerge after the excitement has worn off. Given her haughty and arrogant nature, she would not make a suitable spouse or mother. Endari is a better match for you. If she were available for marriage, she would be the more sensible choice. But in any case, it is wise for you to avoid the sisterly rivalry and jealousy that might result from the marriage. To tear just because she is an elf. Unthgird the Unbroken is actually very much broken. First of all, she could not join the Companions due to her use of excessive force on a trainee. Needless to say, she did not manage to join the Companions and is now looking for brawls at the Bannered Mare. Oh, and did I tell you, she is not loyal. She will betray you at any point if you decide to act against the meaningless and savage Enwa Skyrim society. One moment, you are fighting the guards and the other you are fighting her. As a wife, she does not honor the Sixth House and the tribe unmourned, F-tier, and she can keep her worthless armor. Viola Giordano, more like violated my eyes Giordano. She is a mongrel dog busybody that lives in Windhelm and bothers everyone, including my fellow Dunmer, who already have Ulfric Stormcloak to deal with. She is obsessed with true crime, and follows the Butcher's every step. She might as well be his apprentice by how she is obsessed with him. Oh, and once you return Viola's ring from the honest Dunmer Revan Sadri, she threatens to ask the Jarl to raise his taxes. Oh, and she has an obsession with Captain Lonely Gale, bothering him every day and all day. Nerevar. Honestly, rather than marrying her, I would just leave Mundus permanently. You know, I know she is not a farm tool, but even the F-tier does not deserve her. Farm tool tier. Finally, we have the Nord Enwa Isolda. She is obsessed with the farm tool Khajiits, and often trades with them. The trades include the Sleeping Tree Sap, which is probably not the only thing she consumes, as she probably receives moon sugar, skooma, and many, many other items. She uses you as a mule to carry different items to the farm tool caravans. Oh, and she requests the most random items. One of those being a mammoth's tusk. I don't even want to know what she uses it all for, nor do I want to know. I will put her in the farm tool tier, since she has so much fascination with them, and I would not recommend marrying her. Wait, Nerevar, are you saying all of these recommendations are not for you, but for some dragonborn Enwa? Nerevar, I thought I was being your wingman and you used me. Nonetheless, don't forget to honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned by raising your thumbs subscribing to my sermons, and writing on the parchments down below. Oh, and apparently new ways of spreading my sermons by remixing them with YouTube shorts. Spread the word of your charmat far and wide, my fellow sleepers. Thank you to those funding the Sixth House operations. Your support is greatly appreciated, and more exciting sermons are in the works, especially the current charmat Tonya Davis, and the adoring fans Connor Runda and Peanut 8421.